Welcome to Groovy and Grails webinar series from jpassion.com. Today's topic is Grails Controller Part 1. So let's move on with the presentation. So these are the set of topics that we are going to cover. First, we will take a look at controller and actions. We have covered uh, con basic concept of controller and actions already. Uh, we're going to take a look at a bit more and we'll talk about the scopes and then we will see how you can pass a model and how you can select a view and we'll also go through some renderings and then controller interceptors and how redirecting is being used and uh, data binding how data that are being sent from the browser, from the client, are captured as parameters, and XML and JSON responses. Controllers and actions. So as we talked about before, an action in a controller can be in the form of either a method or a closure. Either one should work. However, methods are preferred over closure due to various reasons. Method is considered to be more memory, memory efficient and it also allows the use of stateless controllers. So we'll talk about singleton scope controller. In this case, there is only one controller object. Uh, you can also override actions from subclasses, meaning you can create a subclass of your controller class and uh, then subclass can override these actions because these actions are in the form of uh, methods. Uh, methods can be intercepted uh, with standard proxying mechanism so it's a bit easier to do that uh, while if you uh, have your actions in a form of controller uh, proxying is going to be more difficult because closures are basically an object, a function object to be assigned to properties. default URI and default action. So as we talked about before, as we have seen many cases, many examples so far, a controller has a default URI and it maps to the root URI of the controller. So if you have a book controller and if you have a URI with just a slash and without specifying any action, it will take a default uh, action. Uh, same thing with here, if you have an author controller and if you, your URI ends with just author, then it will use a default uh, action. So how does a default action get selected? So there are a few simple rules. If there is only one action, that is the default uh, action. If there is an index action, then that is the default, that becomes a default action. Or you can specify default action by using this static attribute, static default action, and then you can specify the name of the action. All right, let's do our first exercise. <clears throat> default URI and default action. So we're going to use again uh, Eclipse IDE for all our exercises. So uh, we are going to create controller1-app Grails project, which I have already done it. And we are going to create a domain class, student domain class. So comjpassion.com and student new domain class comjpassion student finish and we are going to add two uh, fields name and age and then we are going to create a book domain class and author domain class so we are creating three domain classes so I'm going to just copy this one and let's create a book compassion jpassion book domain class 
com j passion Boop. and we are going to have a title and publish date as properties and we are going to create the author domain class And we're going to just have a name of the author. Okay. All right. So we save them all. And we are going to create controllers for each of these domain classes. So I'm going to go to these domain classes. And for each of these domain classes, we are going to create controller class. And same thing for book. I want to select new controller. And same thing with the student. New controller student class and we are going to run the application I think I was running the application before so let me just stop it since we have created domain classes we have to restart so let's run this application All right, so the exercise in this, uh, the things we'd like to exercise is the default actions and controller. So for author controller, we are going to uh, the, uh, include only a single action called the only action. Okay, so we are going to, in this case, because the author controller has only one action, this only action should be the default controller when you have a default URI like this. Okay, so let's go to author the controller and we're going to replace with this okay so let's uh, run the application so if I go I'm going to just use this Oops. Yeah, then it should actually uh, invoke uh, this action. I'm the only action. I'm the only action. And now let's modify the book controller class. At this time, it has book controller has two actions. One is index action. The other one is the another action. Uh, because index action uh, the uh, is the default in this case, it will render I'm from index action. So let's copy these two actions to book controller okay and save remove this and save and if I go to book action this time it will uh, it will get the uh, it will invoke index action and we should see I'm from index action okay so let's try, let's try it and that's what we see okay and the last one is setting the default action using default action attribute so for student controller let's try to set the default action so we are setting the default action to be another action so this one should be the default action 
so it should say I'm from another action action okay so let's try this student oops oh I didn't save it okay okay now we are seeing I'm from another action action this one okay all right all right, so that's exercise one in which we just exercise the default URI and default action. So let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is scopes. So scopes concepts are nothing really different from the scopes concept that you see in other web application frameworks. So you can think of scopes are an object. It's a hash like object or map object where you have a key and value pairs. Scope objects uh, could be, uh, there are several scope objects that are available from Grails to your uh, controller code. Uh, they are server context and session context, session ob server context object and session object, uh, request scope object and params scope object and uh, flash scope object. So these are all examples of scope object in which you can add key value pairs and then you can access those key value pairs so in this case assuming the server context uh, app uh, app property is set with some value then you can access it okay you can either use this bracket or you can just use a dot notation like this so either one is fine so we are getting app as a key value and we are getting a value of logged user from the session scope object here we are getting foo uh, the uh, the value from the request scope object here we are getting params a scope object whose keys name flash scope is uh, something that you have again seen in many web application frameworks it's a temporary store temporary store to make attributes available for the request and the next request okay uh, after that uh, the uh, the attributes are cleared flash attributes are cleared. So it is useful for setting uh, a message directly before redirecting. So we're going to actually talk about redirecting a bit more later on. Uh, redirecting is basically asking the browser to go to another uh, page. So that goes to another, you know, the, the second page will be able to access the flash scope attributes. And after that, flash scope attributes will be cleared. So in this case, uh, this delete method, uh, we will actually try to get the uh, book object. And if the book object is not available, then it will set the flash message. And then it will redirect to another action. And uh, this list, uh, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, page, uh, the action will be invoked. And then list page will be able to access this flash page. And after that, it will be cleared. All right. Uh, now we actually talk about the attributes that you can you can save in various types of scope object. Now controller itself can be scoped. Okay. So controller scope can be default uh, as a default prototype or session and singleton. Okay. So prototype is a default. What it means is that uh, a new controller object. A uh, new controller object is created for each request. So this is a bit different from servlet, regular servlet. You know, servlet is not thread uh, safe uh, because the servlet uh, is, is uh, the, the data in the servlet are actually shared by multiple threads. In this case, for each request, because every object, controller object gets created, it is thread safe. Uh, session. Uh, you can actually set the uh, controller to be session uh, scoped. Uh, that means it's a one controller for the user session. Okay. So the way that you can set uh, your controller to be session scoped is saying like this: static scope session or singleton. So this is like a one single uh, controller object for the application. Okay. All right, so let's do exercise two. So here we're going to actually exercise server context uh, scope object and session scope object and things like that. And we also exercise a flash. So we are going to modify student controller. So basically, we are going to add a two, method, two methods, set controller attributes. So here we are actually setting 
uh, the uh, various types of uh, the, uh, the scope object. We are setting servlet context uh, and the session uh, scope object and request and params and then we just render the, the, you know, this message. And then another method, we are going to access this scope object, uh, scope at, you know, attributes of this scope uh, object. Okay. All right, the same thing that you have set here, and you know, basically we are rendering those values. Okay, so let's go to student controller, and we are going to copy this code, and replace. And again, uh, you know, whatever change you make in controller, you don't have to restart the server, restart the app application. So I'm going to save. And then I'm going to go, uh, you know, we are basically setting these scopes attributes. So I'm going to click this one. So scope attributes are set. And then we are going to access those scope attributes. Now, when I access these uh, scope attributes, what you can see is, let's actually try this one first. What you see is that you can access attributes in the server context and session. However, you cannot access the, uh, the uh, attributes in the uh, request as well as params because these are not really, you know, the, uh, it's not actually uh, something you can access in the different request, okay? Um, however, if I actually go to this location uh, from another browser, uh, here I'm actually simulating a different user. So in this case, this different user should have his own session so you can see it can access my app, which is the uh, attribute in the server context that's supposed to be available to everyone as long as the application is up and running. However, it doesn't have its own session. I mean, it, it, this new user has his own session, so this is not because we haven't set it. Okay, so that is. So this new browser is simulating another user, and that another user has a different session. That's why you see no here. All right, so let's move on to the next. So that's what we just did. All right, now let's talk about the uh, flash scope. Okay, so here we are going to add uh, two uh, new methods. So again, the first method is setting the flash. So we are setting message attribute of the flash uh, scope object. Um, I flash message and then we are going to get it. Okay, so let's copy this code and replace uh, this uh, student controller actions with this. Okay, and then save. And let's try to access this. Uh, the uh, We are going to access set flash message. So it's going to set the flash message. Flash message is set. Now we are going to uh, access that flash message. So I'm going to access this flash message. Okay. So this message is available now uh, in this request. However, if I refresh it, this is supposed to be gone because a flash message uh, is going to be available only on the second subsequent uh, the request cycle. So if I refresh it, you can see it's null. Okay. So that's what we just have done. As I said, flash scope is typically is used with a redirection. So redirection is basically, you know, is uh, the going to the uh, the next the, the different page, second page. Okay. So here we are going to redirect to get flash get flash message. You know, basically we direct we are just calling this one. Okay. So here we are going to redirect. Okay. Now let's actually set this one. So you know this set message get message like a two. Okay. So we oops uh, set flash message. Oh, did I save it? Okay. Uh, get flash message two. Oh, okay. I was actually changing the wrong value, so I want to actually change this this value. Okay, all right. So refresh it. Oh, I have to go this way. Time. 
So flash message is set to my flash message two, and then if I again uh, refresh it, oops, yeah. let's try it again, and then I'm going to refresh it. Okay, so here refresh it, and then if I refresh it again, it becomes no. Okay. All right, so that is exercise two. So let's move on to the next exercise. Models and views. Again, you have seen examples of this, so nothing really new. So model is a map object that view uh, uses when rendering. And uh, the keys within that map uh, correspond to variable names uh, that view can actually use. So in this example, here we are returning a model.